What's up, Battletech fans? Welcome to Battle Talk 40, where we're gonna talk about some cool stuff coming out of PAX, and I have got Country Fried Minis. Howdy, y'all. And right down there, we've got Adam of Dream Made Productions. Say hello to the folks at home. Hello, and I'm awake this time. Yeah, you promise I keep calling the unlisted walls. I get you every single time. I keep telling you about the cat girls, man. I swear, I, I hope said, you listen to me one of these days. I don't, I, I don't know anything about any cat girls. Oh, everybody's anyway. got freaking opus. <laughs> let's let's kick it off. Let's talk about this big announcement coming out of PAX. We finally have a plan for when we are going to get our Kickstarter mercenary stuff. Not just, I swear you guys, it's going to happen. Chinese New Year, LOL. No, if anybody remembers the clan invasion one. <laughs> we actually have a plan this time and we're talking about, looks like tail end of quarter one, very That looks to be right. Um, uh, word from uh, Lauren Coleman of Catalyst Games Labs shows great optimism in the production schedule. So it, it's, a, it's a ballpark, but it, seems to be sooner than the uh, projected mid-year um, release. See, because as I recall last time, I remember there was a lot of, okay, we're getting it out, but we didn't actually have any plans, and then we kind of got snagged by Chinese New Year, which, trust, that's a thing I've seen happen before. I, I've been in this for the long haul. I was fine waiting an extra eight months or whatever it was. I can't remember how long it was. Putting this announcement out at, at PAX, even though it's not a, a concrete date, um, it seems to be that the company is super excited about it, and and they're on the ball. I, I believe it. There's a there's a fervor behind uh, BattleTech these days. Oh yeah, I haven't seen this kind of excitement since the '90s, man. I do agree. Putting it out at a place like PAX would really be rolling the dice if you didn't know what you were doing, and you would have a lot of egg on your face after that. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give you the point for that one. I agree. Uh, I like the fact that uh, Mr. Coleman is talking about optimism. I like his attitude on the whole thing. So I'm personally looking forward to a lot of the miniatures that we're getting. And now we're getting tanks. We're getting mechs oh, and tanks. In fact, so I don't think any other board set that we've had in the entire time uh, that we've been having Battletech is ever had tanks in it aside from city tech. And they were just little chits of paper. Yeah. To, to get people excited about combined arms is is really awesome because I mean in my opinion Battletech was always infantry and tanks and and mechs and not just four mechs slugging it out so to to get folks excited on that and, and start using them is is really cool uh, I'm looking forward to my helicopters mm -hmm. ah yes the VTOLs <laughs> I get I'm... to buzz around and get on people's nerves I genuinely hope that these tanks peak folks interest and this is something yeah. i've been saying now for months i've been going, great because the biggest thing that i've noticed and i don't know what you guys get in your no, your local meta but here nobody ever asks for tanks it's not a requested thing not and so it would be one of those things where i'd say well look i would do it if there was a lot of like demand for it or folks seem to be into it but like sure. i end up using tanks more as objective things like okay you have to guard that one or here's a convoy, three out of four of them have to make it out, you know, and I don't end up using combat capable things more than once in a blue moon. Do you guys get the same same kind of thing where you're from? I, I find it um, kind of hard to get people into vehicles, but uh, I, I make a concerted effort myself to build lists around like I've got a Lance with maybe slightly under equipped mechs for the points value and then pepper in a few tanks. Like my last one had a pair of uh, Striker LRMs and uh, <laughs> people respected them immediately <laughs> you better or else they'll teach you <laughs> okay i got a theory on this one all right you're just there before this uh you had two kind of bad choices you either had to spend you know metal minis prices on tanks which yeah. you did get two to a pack so i mean it wasn't completely horrible but to say hey you're gonna have to go out and spend this money on tank minis that you probably won't use very much as right. opposed to a mech that you're probably going to use quite a bit sure people just didn't want to make the investment i know i didn't want to and if you're gonna throw down like little cardboard chits then you're kind of like oh that's all i got so right. to now have an affordable way to go out and say i'm gonna start putting these plastic minis down 
a lot of people are going to go, oh, I don't have to spend $15 right. on two little tanks. Oh, and now I can take the risk on buying them. And if I spend $5 on a tank and it sits there, then it's not that big of an investment. I was just thinking the same thing, investment. It was a heavy investment back in those days. And it was, as you say, low replay value there for those tanks. I, I totally agree. And to have them in the new updated plastics uh, with these new designs is really awesome. I'm peeking over at uh, Anthony Scroggins' Patreon page right now. And, and I see the, the Ontos and the, the Demolisher and the Warrior sculpts. And they look fantastic. Plus, they're mounted already to hex bases, which um, is great for those big tanks that didn't really scale properly. I think folks are gonna be really pumped about it and we'll see more on the field. But before that, I'm gonna let you all take over for me on this one. We've got a lot of source material coming out. We've got novels, we've got rec guides, we've got field manuals. I know they call them something else these days, but you gotta remember, I'm old school. That's what I remember that as. Uh, I'm personally super excited about these force manuals. Uh, it, it's a chance to introduce new players to some of the expanded lore within factions and to dribble them out through the year is, is a, a great way to keep people super involved and super, super into uh, this, this uh, 2024 release schedule. Um, I even like renaming them force manuals from the old uh, field manuals is a, yeah, is a great manuals. way to <laughs> introduce it as a new product. Although it's, it's, um, it's an important thing for p folks to have access to, I think. It is for both Alpha Strike and Battletech Tabletop. Plus, they're, they're releasing them in... You can buy the, the Force Manual, and it's it's everything up to Ill Clan. And if you're one of those players oh, okay. that's getting excited about the new stuff, they will also have an Ill Clan supplement. So you can do the whole two-book thing to, to get the full gamut of the eras. I've played several games in that era now where I, I was like, Adam, uh, I have no idea what any of these do. So uh, I'm just going to build off of what I know and we'll see what happens. <laughs> so I'm very grateful to see a lot of this stuff coming because it means that I can get the PDFs and just stock my hard drive up. And anytime I have some downtime, I can study this. Don't and feel course, bad, man. I often don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure about that? Like, I, I don't really know anything about the Ill Clan myself and haven't had much excitement about diving into it, but having these recognition guides come out and this concerted effort from Catalyst to advance the storyline will go a long way to get those new players in, but also get grognards like myself to buy some new stuff. <laughs> Am I really a grognard anymore? Do I get to say <laughs> that? <laughs> Am I part of that club? Because uh, well, I tell people I aged in reverse when I was uh, <laughs> a kid. It was like, 14, 15 years old, I was like, clan tech is dumb. And now today I'm just like, no, no, bring it on. I don't care. We'll do anything. <laughs> Admittedly, I'm still there myself. I'm a spheroid through and through. Oh yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll play inner sphere. If you give me my druthers, I'm not going to bring up <laughs> clan stuff, but if somebody brings it to the table, I'll go, okay, yeah, I can do this. All right. Let's, let's go through the motions there. So I'm kind of one of those like jack of all trade, master of none players, but folks forget the other part of that quote, which is, but is oftentimes better than a master of one. So <laughs> seeing ill clan stuff, I got to get good, y'all. I got to get my skills up because I be going out to places and these people be busting stuff out on me. I remember when I was much younger and seeing these sculpts come out and I, I looked at them. Do you guys remember that old uh, like Looney Tunes parody where they did the extreme bunny and it was just awful? That's what it looked like to me. I, I looked at it just like that and I was like, this is wrong. Th th no. And over the last, I want to say, 12 to 15 years, I've come to be like, no, 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 these are really great. I love the way this looks like Mad Max. <laughs> yeah. so. Back to the One X robots! I love those magnificent One X robots! The uh, recognition guides, they're going to have a printed version in second quarter, or at least that's their target. So that'll be nice to have it in paper instead of just PDFs. Let me ask you guys this. I'm old, so I remember when this was called a technical readout. What do you like yeah. better, a recognition guide or a technical readout? Hmm. I, I'm a little biased towards technical readout, but I think that is 
that is just again that's the grognard in me uh wanting to stick to the way it was and i, I think relabeling these things even though it's really kind of the same deal is a great strategy to to keep people not only again keep people roped in and draw in new players as well i personally yeah. like technical readout much better uh the recognition guide it's fine my personal opinion on it was use that as marketing material use that as like a, a card or something where you get like you know a picture of the mech and some like we don't know what this is and then keep the like TR the old up. flash cards <laughs> yeah yeah flash like, cards <laughs> yeah like back when the uh when the clan invasion got started and they didn't know what any of these mechs were what they could do you know sure. and they were just sort of kind of learning from it from okay well this guy's combat computer survived so we're gonna look to see what this thing can kind of do so we're talking about advancing timelines we're talking about the evolution of miniatures and the evolution of battletech if you didn't already know is something i kind of like to specialize in myself i i find myself what, what's the what's the uh the quote from uh, Spider-Man, I'm something of a Battletech enthusiast myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> we have finally got our first pre-painted miniatures coming out of the box. Alexander Kerensky, a legend near and dear to my heart. I feel vindicated seeing this because I remember when I painted mine, I don't have the forest green highlights like this one has. I painted it Star League, Olive Drab, OD Green, and I got so much heat. No, it needs to be forest green. I said, nope, that's how, it... so I see it coming out of the box and I say I was right. <laughs> I was right. But how do you oh, feel yeah. about it? It's kind of shades of the old Mech Warrior clicky tech days. You know, as a mini painter myself, it, 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 can be a little disappointing but at the same time i have some love for the clicky tech stuff okay. and there's something pretty <laughs> nice about being able to rope in folks who aren't mini painters like there's several guys in the meta out here who just hire out the paint jobs or even play with gray plastic so to have that on the on the field is awesome plus the box it's coming out in with the with the other sculpts is pretty dang fantastic See, yeah i like just... it because i'll finally have an option other than to play with my really bad painting jobs or gray minis because i mean look at the the job on this this orion it's pretty fresh it looks pretty yeah, good yeah i agree and it, honestly that's got me excited for the other one as well the direwolf prometheus that is yeah out. we only have Victory artwork so far but it will be it will be fantastic to see i just love having the option and and i think with the way battletech products tend to fly off the shelves at your flgs yeah. I think it, it's a great choice on their part, and and a good way to keep that keep that momentum rolling that that Catalyst can can capitalize on now. Because it's one thing to get gray plastic and look at it and go, I have no idea what is even possible with this. As to seeing something and going, oh, oh, that's what these things should look like, and then having some kind of starting thing to go with. And sure. see, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Uh, it's like we were on the same page there because I thought, okay, you've got the Direwolf Prometheus now and you've got the Direwolf Widowmaker. I will tell you, the Direwolf A, just absolutely one of my favorite machines across the board. If you give me the choice and I have the ability to use it, the odds are pretty good that I'll just say, yeah, just give me that. I know what I'm doing there. So that's one I would really like to see coming out. And seeing these, these variant Direwolves kind of reinforces my pet theory on them which is that in the lore the dire wolf is like the classic car the hot rod the like thing that everybody gets you know like if you have high enough status so what do you have if you don't have a dire wolf well, then who the hell are you <laughs> do you, am i crazy but i feel like that's what it is it's definitely a, a iconic chassis and even as a hater on clan tech i i gotta admit <laughs> i am a little bit partial to the daishi imagine that level of excitement as a new battletech player and yeah. going into the shop mm. and you, there's that pack with that pre-painted model right there ready to go ready to go on the table i think it's a fantastic choice and and even if you're a painter you could always strip it and repaint it I, I do want to note here that looking at the um, the release window as well, it's super exciting to see that the Star League Command Lance, which would include our pre-painted Orion, uh, is slated for quarter one. So we could be seeing these on the shelves uh, before the Kickstarter comes out, 
which is is a great way to get people excited about the new models and then receive all their new models. Right, exactly. And don't get me wrong, I'd love to have that atlas too on my painting table. Mm -hmm. It does oh, look yeah. fantastic. Yeah, we got the Atlas 2, a Phoenix Hawk special, which I'm excited for. Yeah, it's got uh, that laser on the shoulder. Yep, uh, the pre-painted Orion and that Thunderhawk. Oh, that Thunderhawk is so good. I was uh, just considering picking one up from Iron Wind Metals, and now I think I'm going to hold my horses and get the new sculpt because it, it's hear that IWM? true to the original artwork. <laughs> and I'm a lover of the IWM. I, I want the doof. I want the goofy. I want those Dwayne Loose artworks on the table in the flesh. But they've done such a great job of updating the designs and making them look true to form and classic. So I think we're going to have a really exciting 2024 as they drip out these packs. And it looks like there's one in each quarter as well. The, uh, I do believe so. You've got the Star League Command Lance, the second Star League Assault Lance, the third Star League Striker Star, and the third Star League Battle Star. So uh, a full year of fun and fantastic uh, releases and updates to the sculpts. The Atlas II, the Phoenix yep. Hawk Special, the yep. Orion and the Thunderhawk in the first one. And the second one, we got the Daishi Prometheus, an Emperor, an Ooh, Argus. an Emperor, huh? So, uh, Argus, which is for Mech Warrior 4. Mm. Love uh, the Argus. <laughs> he Helios and a coolant truck. So, we're getting some little doohickeys. Uh, Does it have Stone Cold Steve Austin riding in the in the driver's seat <laughs> with the coolant truck? <laughs> no, but I'm sure once Country Fried Minis gets done with it, it will. Yeah, I can uh, see that happening. The third one has the Lament, a yes. Jackalope, a Kentaro, a Hammerhead Two, a Havoc, and an Ordnance Truck. Pop for the Kentaro. I like that. And the fourth one will have a Savage Wolf Prime, Ooh, a Wendigo, right. an Excalibur, a Peacemaker, a Malice, and a Repair Vehicle. Aha. So it looks like each one is going to have some kind of staff support vehicle to go with it? All but the first one, apparently. Hmm. It seems like a really good choice, too, to, to pepper those in. But uh, of that list, what I'm most excited about is these designs that people aren't necessarily familiar with. I just put together a uh, 10K battle value Tiger Sharks lance and included a Helios in it. And people are like, what the hell is this? And it, it, it was <laughs> such a fun design. Yep, but I, I, know, I know that I've got a photo here that you haven't seen yet. You didn't know these existed until I told you about them. <laughs> so let's get your reaction because uh, we're going to bring the drop ships here. So oh, man. Oh, that's that's a, that's a large lad. <laughs> I, I, I think it'll, it'll make for a, a, a super fun center piece for any any engagement, as well as a, a great opportunity to to uh, introduce some fun scenarios. And look how easy it would be to put together. I mean, it looks yeah, like you nuts. just glue your legs in there and boom, Shanka, you're off Done to the deal. races. And that would paint up real easy. Just spray it down, and the details are so large, you could take your brush and just drip null oil in the in the crevices or whatever other wash you've chosen, and you wouldn't even have to affect the the spray down paint job. It would be so easy to paint. Uh, now, now, how does this? Um, how large is this in hexes on the map? Is it? Is it the uh, the seven hex or a, a third ring of, of hexes around it? I want to say seven, but because uh, that's what I believe it was if we yeah. looked at the old, uh, what is it, Tukiyid map pack where yes. they had the Novacat landing zones. I do believe that's about the size of it there, as Joe Friday would say. So I'm more curious about how much they're going to charge for this stuff. What do you think is a good price? I I'll can't imagine them dropping too much. How much was were the um, the Comstar boxes? It's, it's something in the range of thirty USD. Yeah, I believe that. Well, before inflation took hold, I want to say it was thirty bucks. I want to say they're now thirty four ninety nine. If I yeah, had to take a guess, I I would guess that it's it'll be in that kind of ballpark. Um, it's it's more plastic, but uh, it does seem like Catalyst has had this approach of, of leaving the boxes very accessible and affordable to folks. I, I tell new players all the time that 
one of the major draws of, of the current iteration of Battletech is you can come into the game store and drop 25 bucks and start playing right away. Ooh, yeah, get going. We just had somebody in the game shop last week. We told literally the same thing. Too. All it takes is this and you're set. And he had come from a Warhammer 40K background. And that man had only barely gotten his feet wet in that yeah. world and realized oh my God. he was in over his head. <laughs> and so, yeah, I've always loved that Battletech is a game that's bigger than the box, but that only what comes in the box is what you need. Like, if you didn't want to buy anything else, you wouldn't have to. It all works as a standalone, or you can take that and go as far with it as you want. We've yeah. got a year of uh, fun stuff coming out. Um, and, that's right. And a whole bunch of rumors, which are sometimes just as exciting as seeing true release dates. <laughs> I think at any rate, it's safe to say it's a good time to be a Battletech fan. Folks, thank you so much for joining us here on the 40th edition of Battle Talk. And if you like what you've seen so far, do us a big favor. Hit that subscribe bell down there and turn on all notifications so you can find out exactly where Battlebound is going to turn up next. Don't forget to subscribe to my boy, Country Fried Minis, right over to my left, and Dream Made Productions right there below. We sure hope you've enjoyed this as much as we've enjoyed being on for you. We'll see you next time right here on the Space Lanes on Battlebound. Be sure to smash our like button and subscribe to our channel. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.